If his name was Edward Moore, with his qualifications, with your qualifications, Teddy, if it was Edward Moore, your candidacy would be a joke. But nobody's laughing. Edward Moore Kennedy knew that was true. Edward Moore Kennedy knew that it was his last name and his last name alone that made him a viable Senate candidate in Massachusetts in 1962 to fill the Senate seat left by his older brother, Jack, who went from the Senate to the presidency and was assassinated a year after Teddy was elected to the Senate. Teddy Kennedy was barely old enough to be sworn in as a senator and had held only one adult job in his life, which was the political appointment of assistant district attorney in Boston, the job he served in less than a year before running for United States Senate. Ted Kennedy worked hard to earn his place in the Senate after knowing that he had simply inherited it. He served in the Senate long enough to be reelected by some voters who weren't old enough to remember his two assassinated older brothers. But every time Ted Kennedy was reelected, it included the votes of some people I know who were always, at least in part, voting for Teddy as an homage to Jack and Bobby. There are many ways to be privileged in America, but there is nothing quite like Kennedy privilege. Most Kennedys live quiet, responsible lives without ever seeking public office or seeking the spotlight in any way. Many of them have done and do admirable work. Most of them do not drop references to their fathers or their uncles so that you will know for sure in the first minute exactly who they are and treat them accordingly. Ted Kennedy chose two simple adjectives to describe his second assassinated brother in the eulogy he delivered in St. Patrick's Cathedral for Senator Robert F. Kennedy in 1968, good and decent. Those two adjectives apply to many members of the Kennedy family, including the Kennedys, who oppose the work of and the presidential candidacy of Robert Kennedy Jr., who testified to a Republican-controlled House committee today solely and entirely because of Kennedy privilege. Here is the first sentence of the adoring and long introduction of Robert Kennedy Jr. today by a democracy-denying Republican member of the House who voted to overturn the results of the last presidential election. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is the son of a former Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy and the nephew of America's 35th President, John F. Kennedy. When Robert Kennedy Jr. began speaking in the hearing today, it took him less than a minute to mention his father and his uncle, President Kennedy. Censorship is antithetical to our party. It was, it was appalling to my father, to my uncle, to FDR. The hearing was supposed to be about censorship, but it wasn't, since no one could come up with any examples of government censorship. Robert Kennedy Jr. knows nothing about censorship and obviously has no idea how much the American news media operated under strict government censorship during FDR's presidency, the FDR who Robert Kennedy praised today who expert witness Robert Kennedy cited as a staunch opponent of censorship. During World War II, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was missing from the White House for great lengths of time, and the question of where he was was not allowed to be asked or answered. Sometimes he was just away from the White House trying to recuperate from illness. At other times, he was on secret missions to meet Winston Churchill and Joseph Stalin. And once, he went to Hawaii where everyone living in Honolulu could see the president being driven through the city for a couple of days, and no reporter in Hawaii was allowed to report that the president was there. There was no law forcing the American news media to obey the censorship imposed on them by President Roosevelt in World War II, but they all lived by it. It really was government censorship. It was something Robert Kennedy Jr. has never seen. 
and it was considered necessary for winning World War II. Expert witness Robert Kennedy Jr. doesn't know anything about that. He is not very well educated. He has some fancy sounding schools on his academic resume, but he has confessed that he was addicted to drugs during most of high school, all of college, all of law school, and during his very brief turn as an assistant district attorney in Manhattan, where he was given a, that job by a friend of his father and his uncles. The job in the district attorney's office ended badly when Robert Kennedy Jr. flunked the bar exam and then was arrested for possession of heroin, to which he pleaded guilty. I was in a class with Robert Kennedy Jr. in college, a small classroom, about a dozen or so students. Sometimes I sat beside him. I didn't know him. I don't remember speaking with him. When I saw him, I felt nothing but sadness, his and mine. He was just a few years away then from the night his father was assassinated. I grew up in a Boston neighborhood of Dorchester where his grandmother was born. Boston Irish Catholic kids my age grew up adoring President Kennedy and then being crushed by the sequential assassinations of the Kennedy brothers. Robert Kennedy Jr. was noticeably the least attentive student in that classroom, with me probably being the least capable student in that classroom. I did not know then that he was addicted to drugs in college, as he has subsequently told us, but now what I was seeing in the classroom fits that description. There's a difference between attending college, which can be done while addicted to drugs, and being educated in college. Robert Kennedy Jr. has no science education at all, none. But even though he could never get through a pre-med class in biology or chemistry or any other pre-med course, Robert Kennedy Jr. presents himself as a higher medical authority than Dr. Anthony Fauci, who was not addicted to drugs in high school, college, and medical school, was never arrested for heroin possession. Anthony Fauci was a hardworking high school student in Brooklyn who kept working hard as a student all through his pre-med requirements in college and in medical school. And while Robert Kennedy Jr. was committing crimes while working in the district attorney's office in Manhattan, Dr. Anthony Fauci was saving lives. But Robert Kennedy, with Kennedy privilege, believes that that allows him, that Kennedy privilege allows him to grab microphones and denounce the work of scientists, physicians, and public health experts, devoted public servants like Dr. Anthony Fauci. Robert Kennedy Jr. does that on the basis of nothing other than his last name. Robert Kennedy Jr. is now as much a public liar as Donald Trump, and some of his lives have a truly Trumpian echo to them. I have a better record on Israel than anybody in this chamber today. I am the least racist person ever to serve in office, okay? I am the least racist person. Robert Kennedy Jr. and Donald Trump, in their similar delusion, both claim to be better than anyone else on what they claim to be virtues. Robert Kennedy Jr. is not better on Israel than any of the Jewish and non-Jewish members of the House of Representatives and Senate. But he told that lie today about himself that is, at the same time, an insult to hundreds of members of the House and Senate because that is the deeply perverted way that he now uses Kennedy privilege. Robert Kennedy Jr. lied under oath today more than once. I have never been an anti-vax. I have never told any, I have never told the public avoid vaccination. This is just too easy. Robert Kennedy Jr. said this in 2021, if you're walking down the street and I do this now myself, which is, you know, I don't want to do, I'm not a busybody, I see somebody on a hiking trail carrying a little baby and I say to him, better not get him vaccinated. I'd like to introduce into the record a letter from Louis Silkin, a law firm representing Mr. Kennedy, which states as he has stated repeatedly, he vaccinated all his children, and I'd like that to be introduced into the record, um, but tells the black community and myself 
a mother of five black children that I should really be careful and not necessarily have the same safeguards to protect my family, my children, from a virus that has killed millions of people because I'm black. Democrat Stacey Plaskett said Republicans were, quote, putting Mr. Kennedy on display. Robert Kennedy Jr. lied under oath about what he said last week in New York about COVID-19 having been targeted, targeted, deliberately targeted to not be harmful to Jewish people. And so Congressman Dan Goldman played the video recording of exactly what Robert Kennedy Jr. said, which proved that he had just lied under oath in today's hearing. I'd like to quickly play a, a short video, if we could. COVID-19 is targeted to attack uh, Caucasians and, uh, and, uh, and uh, black people. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. Robert Kennedy Jr.'s personal life has been a mess for most of his life. He started an affair with his second wife while he was still married to his first wife, a wife, a Trumpian style marital transition. He married his second wife a month after the divorce from his first wife, while the second wife was already six months pregnant. His second wife bore him four children, but suffered deeply from Robert Kennedy Jr.'s sexual adventure, adventurism, which he recorded in a diary. She took her own life two years after they divorced. Many of her friends blame Robert Kennedy Jr. for that. I mention the mess of his personal life only because it demonstrates how borderless his terrible judgment is and always has been. He's not a person to take advice from on anything, least of all a matter of life and death like COVID-19. Today's hearing was supposed to be about censorship and the way Robert Kennedy Jr. made it about censorship was to say that censorship is about being criticized. I'm subject to this new form of censorship which is called targeted propaganda where people apply pejoratives like anti-vax. His new form of censorship is not censorship. Robert Kennedy Jr. is claiming that he is a victim of censorship because he is criticized. And no Republican on that committee today could come up with a single example of government censorship, not a single example of the government censoring anyone. It is not censorship for the government to ask Twitter to remove a tweet that is false and dangerous to public health. Words have no meaning to Robert Kennedy Jr., which is why he uses the word censorship for criticism. In his under oath testimony, he said that recommended is the same as the word mandated. That is another lie. But Robert Kennedy Jr. cannot score his points to his crowd using the English language in its original meaning, so he has invented his own. Robert Kennedy Jr. has compared some of the public health recommendations made during the COVID-19 pandemic to be as horribly oppressive as living under a Nazi dictatorship in World War II. Even in Hitler, Germany, you could, you could cross the Alps into Switzerland. You can hide in an attic like Anne Frank did. No one ever said that if you're walking across the Alps that you need to wear a mask during COVID-19. And if you're hiding in an attic during COVID-19, that was actually guaranteed to prevent you from getting COVID. It is a deranged comparison to make to suggest that Anne Frank had an easier time of it than we did here in the United States when we were staying home and watching Netflix more than ever Robert Kennedy Jr. never said what happened to Anne Frank. He never said that she was caught in her attic and taken to a Nazi death camp. Her father was the only member of her family to survive the death camps. Robert Kennedy champions a woman who denies the Holocaust and who has supported the idea that there were 
no gas chambers. A woman who shared a video online in which the speaker said, I believe that the historical evidence is strongly against, is hugely against six million Jews having been deliberately gassed in gas chambers as a deliberate policy of Adolf Hitler. I believe there were no gas chambers. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. has called the woman who shared that video a hero, a hero of his anti-vaccination movement. He has called her a stalwart who is leading his movement. All you need to do to be praised by Robert Kennedy Jr. is to praise him. If you are a Holocaust denier who praises Robert Kennedy Jr., he will praise you. If you are a democracy denier, as every member, Republican member of that committee is, then Robert Kennedy Jr. will praise them. And if you praise him enough, Robert Kennedy Jr. will agree with you that Hunter Biden's laptop had the power to win re-election for Donald Trump, which was the whole point of Republicans getting Robert Kennedy Jr. to sit in front of a microphone in their hearing. They left it to Congresswoman Elif Stefanik to creep in on Robert Kennedy Jr. once he knew who his friends and enemies were in the room. All of his friends were the Republicans who were praising him and all of his opponents were the Democrats who were, who were criticizing him, which he called censoring him. And yet he claims to be a Democrat. Lee Stefanik let a lot of time go by before bringing up the Hunter Biden laptop, which is the obsession of the chairman of this committee, Jim Jordan. At first, Robert Kennedy Jr. seemed to be trying to steer away from the laptop that was lost by someone who was suffering the kind of drug addiction that he, Robert Kennedy Jr., survived. The first words out of Robert Kennedy Jr.'s mouth were, I don't know. But then, because someone who complimented him was egging him on, he went exactly where she wanted him to go. Mr. Kennedy, I want to ask you specifically about the Hunter Biden laptop story. The total blackout on all social media outlets as well as telecom, you couldn't text the link to the Hunter Biden laptop story. This specifically was a form of election interference by the U.S. government in the 2020 election. I don't know enough about it. I know that. Uh, there was censorship on that story and other stories that, uh, you know, presumably um, could have changed people's minds about the election. And we know the polling demonstrates that now. People have said they would have changed their vote had they been made aware of the Hunter Biden laptop story. Isn't that correct? I am not aware of that, but I'm not surprised. He could have just left that last line as I'm not aware of that, but saying the I'm not surprised part clearly shows that he now believes it, believes it in that transaction right there with Elise Stefanik. She was being nice to him, so he's going to believe what she says about somehow the election being stolen from Donald Trump. Robert Kennedy Jr. now believes that 80 million people who voted for Joe Biden would have changed their votes if they knew everything about what was on the president's son's laptop. Would Robert Kennedy Jr. have changed his vote? He claimed that he voted for Joe Biden. You can now add Robert Kennedy Jr. to the list of Trump supporters because Robert Kennedy Jr. is in effect a Trump supporter who believes that Hunter Biden's laptop, or is willing to say that Hunter Biden's laptop, had the power to change the outcome in the presidential election and that Donald Trump were, therefore was the victim of election interference. That is what Robert Kennedy Jr. said today. On July 12th, we extended an open invitation to Robert Kennedy Jr. to appear on this program. We have received no reply at all. The invitation stands. He may decide to never appear on this program as others before him have done. I only hope that other interviewers begin by asking him about all the science courses that he did not take in college. They offered six 
5,000 courses at his college when he was there. Hundreds of them were the most difficult college courses in the world, but another hundred or so of them are among the easiest college courses in the world. Which ones did he take? It is very clear his campaign for president is nothing but a stunt. He will not win a single primary. Joe Biden is going to be the Democratic nominee for president, and Robert Kennedy Jr. is not. The only real political question to ask him is, will he support the Democratic nominee for president, or will he run as a third-party candidate, which will be the most help he could possibly give Donald Trump in the presidential election? I've been very reluctant to speak about Robert Kennedy Jr. on this program because I have not wanted to enable his access to the drug addiction that he has never conquered. The drug addiction that has been with him for all of his adult life. The addiction to attention. The very same addiction that has driven Donald Trump in all of his adult life. 